so John, it's so multi-layered because, you know, unlike other countries, India is so backlogged for employment cases. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you were doing an IV case, I mean, you've basically had a perm like 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, so a lot of that documentation, you know, and most likely someone's been here on an H1B, it would be unusual to not adjust into mm -hmm. IV for, for an uh, employment-based case. But you never know, maybe, you know, they age, they're not aged out, but, you know, maybe something happened and you have to IV process. Um, so the other thing that becomes very um, challenging, I think, in, in dealing um, with some of the Indian um, cases is there's, you know, as you know, there's many, many different states in India. So, um, you know, documents, marriage documents, um, birth certificates, there's not one um, like uniform country birth certificate or um, or, or marriage case, uh, marriage certificate. So you've got religious um, attestations, um, you know, a lot of times, especially with older clients, you know, because you see a lot of people who want to sponsor their parents. Mm -hmm. um, and so those, you know, parent cases, a lot of times people don't have a birth certificate at all. Yeah. So it will take um, two affidavits at least to prove that type of um, birth. So let's dig into that. And there's some history involved. So uh, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh had partition when essentially the country got, you know, split in half or a third. Uh, and and people don't have documents after what 1950 or ish or something. So there's expected. So, yeah, those were actually at two separate times. So the Bangladesh was more in the 70s, um, but partition was like 1947. Okay. Um, so you still have people who have pre-1947 um, documents mm -hmm. and so you know that also becomes if someone was displaced um, you know we always we tend to think of um, refugees in the modern context you know things that we see on the news but don't forget you know there was many refugees in in that split so in all directions so typically, because another birth certificate issue I see that happens for my Indian clients is when they're born, they don't put their first name on there. And that could be a problem sometimes. And we do that. We get two affidavits from parents or uncles that are, and then that's fine. But when they're older, they're, they're an 80 year old parent, there's no one really there that's witnessed their birth. So that kind of becomes a headache trying to be able to prove that, okay, we have affidavits and stuff. And you got to do your best and see who is a witness or something involved. Uh, but that is, that's an issue you've seen as well. Absolutely. And the other thing that um, I think in other countries people are not used to seeing is somebody will have a first name and they'll have last name unknown. Yeah. So there's a lot of LNU or first name unknown, FNU, um, and that will be in their passport. Um, another issue that comes up that we see, it's very typical to have, um, you know, especially from the um, 60s and 70s, people who were born at home, and then um, parents kind of picked a birth date. So someone will say, oh, this is my legal um, birthday, yeah. but my date of, my real date of birth is this, and, um, you know, it's, that can cause real issues. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, usually the government issued document is the controlling document, the, the passport. Um, but you will definitely get people who say like, oh, well, so that I could get into the class that my parents wanted, you know, this is my, this is now my birth date. That's like uh, South Asia, West Asia, wide, maybe East Asia, to, to get in the school year, to get in school sooner. It's constantly pushing that and it's such a hassle. And later on, they'll mm -hmm. want to like, when they get citizenship and naturalized, like, I want to correct my birthday now. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> that's not happening. <laughs> yes. Celebrate a new birthday, that's it. Uh, but one cool thing is when they have these documents that are missing names, they do accept by like, school records and they, they have a good amount of alternative documents you could use for a lot of cases in South Asia, India in particular. So that, that's a good backup that you, you could have. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I have done plenty of, um, you know, all up until Nats cases where we've submitted a combination of affidavits and people's um, school records. It could even be, you know, for uh, someone who's over 70, you know, you're, you're submitting like handwritten uh, school records sometimes. You know, another problem that popped up with regards to marriage certificates, I remember it was on the list or last year, 
Now, people were going to the interview and the officer was saying, uh, we don't accept your like Hindu marriage because you didn't go through all the rituals. And so you have to show us videos of that. And that was kind of like just crazy that they would deny cases, but you got to prepare for the worst. Yeah. Well, one particular um, issue that comes up frequently with fiance visas is um, there will be a Hindu ceremony and, um, you know, it could a lot of times be, um, you know, someone didn't get their work visa yet. So they wanted to have the um, ceremony, the religious ceremony with as many family members as possible. Um, they have it. And then the consulate says, um, fiance visa denied because really you're married because that ceremony was a marriage yeah. um, and you can't get a fiance visa if you're already married. So um, you have to be really careful, you know, in documenting, was it a celebration? Was it a religious get together? You know, was it a marriage? Thank you for listening to this episode. For previous episodes and more, please visit the podcast page of our website, immigrationlawyerstoolbox.com. You can also visit the Toolbox YouTube and LinkedIn pages to catch the video versions of these podcasts, news updates, and a lot more. Immigration lawyers can also contact me to join the private Facebook page. The email is info at immigrationlawyerstoolbox.com.